Thanks, EJ. Thank you very much. Okay, so thanks, come in, ladies. Thanks to the wonders of technology. We're beaming all over the world here. We've got uh, Periscope sitting over here, I believe. Is that right? Or not functioning yet? We've got webinars so people can actually uh, catch up and watch this after you've seen me speak because you'll appreciate it. I've had two coffees this morning. I speak very quickly. I'll try and slow down. And I get red carded from Zion if I do speak too quickly. So you can catch it on the webinar afterwards. Uh, this is the third presentation we've had as part of our process of actually helping you guys understand what is a very confusing marketplace. And what I might do to get this one started though is help you poor school children here and this spread out a bit because it's pretty tight. So let's, we've got a little bit of space here. We might be able to just move it down a little bit so you get a bit more space in the room there because it's a little bit tight. It's always going to be a challenge with numbers. But what I want you to do to get started early in this morning, the coffees are about to roll in here. This is perfect timing. Thank you ladies. Excellent work. Is we're going to just get to know each other while the coffees go out around the room. So, uh, so what I want you to do first of all is just meet somebody nearby who you don't know. So say good day to them, say hello to them, ask who they are, what they do, and find out what their challenges are, just to get things started. So have a crack, two minutes. So we'll have another networking session shortly, about an, in a half an hour or so, an hour's time. So we're going to get stuck into the agenda whilst the, the copies are passed out. Uh, so what we're going to learn today is... Yeah. Who wants who wants the cappuccino with six shots of vodka? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so a bit of an icebreaker there. So what we're going to learn today is the benefit of great content and how it makes your future customer love you, uh, what inbound marketing is and how it actually works, uh, the growth sales fast process with Hub and Spoke Publishing, why you need to get started on your blog right now and why you need to use social media, which social media platforms ignite your content how to track and use analytics to make the bean counters happy and the power of repurposing. None of that will be done in order. It's going to be done completely random. So what we're going to do is get stuck into why we're here. Now, in fact, I'm going to get my a person to be my top secret scribe. Sorry, flat white. Anybody else flat So, Christian, you can be my scribe today. You're the ticker offerer. So once we get something done, we're, uh, we're going to check it off. Right. So let's just get started with why... Traditional marketing doesn't work. I'm out of sync. My slides ready, but who cares? So what I'm going to do is give you guys the pipeline. And this is one of the challenges that everyone's got as a salesperson in their business. And let's face it, we're all salespeople at some stage. So with the actual um, marketplace, what we have here is the sales funnel for people typically. And so what you have is a situation where at the top here, you've got traditional marketing. Traditional marketing is above the line stuff. So we've got TV, radio, radio. Uh, Sorry, Mel, radio. <laughs> We've also got the paper magazines, etc. And they've been around for 65 years, pretty much. And the whole point of those processes is to interrupt you with what you're doing. So it's not about actually uh, you wanting to see the stuff. It's about, you know, I'm about to go to the toilet instead of one watching the footy. What do I want to do? I, I want to go to the toilet. But suddenly a massive great idea comes on board, TV. It's like, oh, I'll stop, I'll pause, I'll do that. You're flipping the pages of the paper. Oh, I'll stop flipping. I'll stop for that ad. You're on the radio, you want to turn the ad down, but suddenly it engages you. So that's all about interrupted marketing. And typically it's hitting people at the top of the cycle where they're 0% interest in what you're trying to sell. They have no interest in what you're trying to sell whatsoever. And it actually dates back to the days of, of the, the salespeople walking around the suburbs, knocking on doors saying, do you want to buy my product? Okay, interrupting and hoping. Now that's been around for a long time, that method, but of course everything has completely changed. 
Back 25 years ago, it was really the only way you got information about a product. It was the only way you could discover, right, I, um, you know, I'm thinking about buying a car, what do I think of? Well, I've seen four Holden ads lately, so it might be a Holden. And then you track off down Main North Road and you go and check out all the car dealers and you end up spending a whole entire Saturday afternoon, you have a fight with your wife and it's all pretty intense. But that's how you learn about your cars 25 years ago. But these days, of course, what happens is that the internet causes people to do a whole bunch of research before they buy pretty much anything, perhaps with the exception of toothpaste. Having said that, though, you've now got a situation where a lot of those brands, those fast-moving consumer goods, are actually putting all their information about their product online. For example, Baker's Delight, we've got a dairy intolerant child. We are now able to go on the net, find out what we can buy from Baker's Delight, see what's got dairy in it, what's not, and then go and buy it. And so even the FMCG market's still using the internet to convey their messages. So what's happening is that pretty much 70% studies show, which means I made it up, 70% of people are actually, in most situations, doing, sorry, 70% of the research is done before they meet a person. So before they meet a person, which means that something is happening here. And traditional advertising, which includes cold calling, doesn't work because you're interrupting very pe busy people at a time and they don't want to be interrupted. They're not looking for your product. And so the basis of what I'm going to talk today about, which is pretty much content marketing and inbound marketing, is about making sure that we are putting our messages in the right spot in this funnel so that when people go looking for your brand, when people go looking for your product, they can find you on the internet. And it's about making sure you're engaging them through this funnel of love. So at the point in time when they actually want to speak to somebody, when they desire to speak to somebody, you're there. Not up here. Not up here. Salesperson knocks on your door, bugger off, I'm not interested. Okay, That's up here land. Now, of course, the big brands are still playing in this space massively, trying to get you to convert over. But, and so you used to have this situation where top of mind recognition would come in, like the car story, where you say, right, what ute am I going to buy? Hilux, Ford, whatever. But, of course, what's happening is that brand recognition thing, when you play the game, oh, who do you think of first in fast food? You think of McDonald's. Who do you think of first in shoes? You think of Nike. Who do you think of first in financial planning? You think of Hurdy. Okay, these are the things that occur. So, but, of course, what's happening there is that while she may think of them first, you're actually going to go to the internet to check. So part one is, yeah, I remember you, I think of you. But part two is I'm going to check your story. I'm going to check out to make sure that what you're telling me on your TV ad or your magazine ad actually makes sense. And ironically, in the case of cars, who actually sees a car ad and says, I'm buying a Hilux, job done, sold? Nobody. Okay. Everybody will then subsequently research. So the great irony, irony of big brand marketing is that they're actually attracting people to their competitors' products as well as their own because they're actually advertising the product. Right. Who'd like a ute? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, I'm going to check out the highlights, but I'm also going to check out the Nissan and the et cetera, et cetera, the whole lot. And so the internet is where all this information is done. So the question I now have for you is which part of this 70% are you playing in? And we're going to do a little exercise. And it's kind of, kind, kind of fun because it's got the top secret connector pens, okay? So spread them out, the colours. You're about to join up with somebody you don't even know, which is really scary. That means you two can't talk to each other, <laughs> okay? So grab the connector pens. Now, I want you all to take one sheet of paper between two, spread out. We're going to have a little bit of an exercise here. And actually, first slide's done. First, line design, first slide is done. Okay, grab a piece of paper, ladies. That's cool. Yeah, first you can ding it. So welcome to your mall. We're going to do an exercise here. We actually need to be creative. Who would have thought you have to think so early in the morning? Oh, my God. You guys know each other, so you better go with Rob. You go with her, dear Alyssa. So there we go. i got some paper back there. So what I want you guys to do now, and you have to listen, scary as that seems. So what I want you to do is get a cup of pens, and with your partner, with your partner, what I'd like you to do now is design the floor plan or the side view of an 80 shop shopping centre. An 80 shop shopping centre. It could look like a grid, 10 by 8. It could be a top secret floor plan. Very quick sketch, five minutes. And I want you to design one store and name it. Name one shop in your shopping centre, one box, make a little squiggle. Name it, give it a bit of colour and decoration, have fun with the brand. Create a brand. You've got five minutes. Create something cool for five minutes. Draw it up. Have you guys got paper? You need a grid, you need one shop. 
Say so what? We don't have to match up with our customers. Oh, no, you're okay. You don't have to match up. Yeah, just, just go. Just scribble. Have fun with it. Go with it. Yeah, run. Go hard. Yeah. So here we go. Oh, you, got, you guys are right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 80 shots, so grid 8 by 10 Yep. Has to be a grid. Yeah, or, or you can draw whatever you like. Let, let, have fun with the brand, man. Go for it. So it could be this, it could be it could be a big circle with high. It could be whatever you think. <laughs> <laughs> the, sang the sanguine comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys are cheating on the upstairs. I'm going to grab my here. Look at that, it's awesome. That's our first <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? And of course, no roof. That would actually grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give it a name. Give it a name. Perfect. Okay, one more minute, guys. One more minute. <laughs> You got to decorate your one shop. Have you guys got one shop inside there? You have named the shopping mall. You got to name. Got to have a shop, yeah. Yeah, name a shop. Yeah. You got one shop in there. Okay, finishing up now. Okay, so uh, here we go, back into it. So it's really interesting. First of all, with these group exercises, you can see the different personality types coming out. We've got the sanguine Makala down here, who's the marketing comms expert, and Mark, who's a finance guy. She's making a beautiful and drawing squiggles everywhere. He's counting, make sure there's 80 shops. <laughs> Perfect. The graphic designer over here, Kristen's gone and uh, looking at me with shock horror because with 30 seconds to go, she's using a white space. <laughs> so what we have there is your shop. So let's talk about some of the shop names. Neil, what do you got, mate? What's your name of your shop? Uh, it's on Perfect. Shout out to the world. Um, Literally the world. Periscope's live. Probably haven't got any followers, but it's okay. All right. Uh, based on your idea of a funnel, funnel people here. Oh, that'd be great. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But this is possibly the best new shopping centre ever. Um, Oh, that is good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. So we work out which shop we want to go to next. Sold. That's great. That's a fabulous one. Okay, Kristen, what do you get? Let's have a look at the design. Yeah. Mm. Us in the middle with fashion and an entry point to the shop in the middle. So you've got people that can feel that it's not exactly in the middle and they can see what's going on the edge where they come and go and come and go from each. Like it. That's really good. Rhiannon, you've, you've obviously got a background as an art teacher. That's pretty clever. Ours was a pentagon. Now it's a hexagon. We've got the burnt side tree coming over the middle. Yeah. Um, we're all funneling into the middle and our shop's called the Kingdom of Jack. Oh, very good. Excellent. Put the trademark that one. Okay. Uh, Alyssa, what have you got? Um, we've got a square tower of glass. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a square tower of glass. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Get a job with Apple with that one. Okay. So now the whole point of this, it's actually a serious reason, is that imagine being a shopping centre manager. And I actually got this idea from a shopping centre manager. Is it, what are they after most? What's the thing that shopping centre managers want? So you're the manager of people. Traffic. Okay? Traffic. So now I want you to imagine that this is your website. How many pages have you got on your website? It's rhetorical. Don't answer it. Answer in your head. That is equivalent to the number of shops in your shopping mall. So if you have the standard contact us, about us, who we are, history. You've got five shops in your shopping mall. How interesting is your shopping mall? Now, yours is actually an interesting shopping mall because you put the shop right smack bang in the middle of the hallway. That's actually a great spot for a page. That's actually really well designed because effectively everyone's going to go to your shop. But what happens after your one shop is visited? How interesting is your shopping mall? And once you build that one shop, do you leave the shopping mall alone? Do you never promote it? Do you never increase the number of shops? Do you actually just leave it as a dirty old stinking facade from the day one? And the great irony is that in what is now 25 years of marketing, and effectively the internet was invented back in 92, 93, we've been building websites for 20 years. The vast majority, 95% of the websites that we see in the kingdom, are people building one shop in their shopping centre, once off build, leave their shopping facade forever. And don't add to it, don't advertise it, and don't make it look amazing. So your shopping centre there, when you're thinking about your website, I want you to grab it out of this is that you need to have lots of shops. You need to have amazing shops. You need to have lots of interesting things for people to discover and see. Not just a shoe shop. Not just a toy shop. Not just a shop that sells gifts, perfumes, papers. Think of a shopping centre. And think of Frank Lowry, who created Westfield, who did an amazing job of doing that because what he did was build an incredible entertainment complex that gives everybody the chance to discover something cool and new and buy it. A phenomenal effort from a bloke who had nothing when he came to this country. He's now the world's biggest shopping centre retailer. Westfields are destination entertainment zones. Is your website right now destination entertainment zone for your customers? Oh, I can absolutely guarantee, with the exception of the ones that we build, <laughs> they're not, okay? They're not. We see it so often because we're asked to do it all the time. We'd like a quote on our website, please. No problem at all. 25,000 bucks. That's not enough, but okay. We build the website, stays there for three yeah. years, and doesn't get touched. Oh, How much money do you think a shopping yeah, center would make if it had one uh, shop? It's just what what would happen on opening day? He's brave enough to say. You'd walk in and, and you say, well, this thing's not finished. Right? Where's the rest of the stuff I came for? One, apart from Kristen's and say, okay, this is a great spot, lovely big white space, lots of area to hang out in. Yours, on the other hand, you'd stay for a while. Like, I agree that the bar is good. <laughs> okay, the bar is very good. You wouldn't give a shit about the shops, okay? Bugger the shops and stay at the bar, <laughs> okay? So, so the point is that... Just like a shopping centre, you need to be adding to your shops. Improving your shop facades every single day like Westwood. Westwood have rules. Who's got a Westwood shop? Anyone been involved in a Westwood shop? Okay. We built one at, we built one at, uh, at Bondi Junction as part of Next Bite until we stopped after it 
we discovered that they required three-dimensional fit-outs and it was going to cost us $300,000 to build a shop which we normally build for sixty-five. Yeah. So we said, no, thank you very much. Three-dimensional structures, yeah. gorgeous facades, incredible oh, interiors yeah. to create the entertainment experience. We've got to provide content and information for our consumers. And it relates back to here. We've got to help them trust us. It's part of our journey. It's part of the journey you want to take your communities yeah. down, to help them trust you. They are going to the internet to find out answers. Google's job is to create answers. That is what they do. Google make money from answering people's questions. So Google's supply comes from you guys. Because Google's there to provide the answers for the questions being asked. And where does it come from? Your shopping center. Google's like, yeah, shoes. go and buy me a pair of shoes. Okay, I'll go and check out the shopping centers. Here, 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 here. cool, I found some for you. 0.79 second return, quite amazing, really. And so Google right. is out there finding the answers. Now, question for you guys, rhetorical again. Are you providing the answers for Google to give to your future customers? Is your website providing the answers to your future customers? Yeah, and I know that because very few websites do. 80 shops. In website terminology, depending on the complexity of your product, it's a thousand pages. Okay. Who's got over a hundred pages in their website, apart from Saints? No. Two people. Yeah, okay. okay. So a hundred pages on the website. So you need a hundred pages in your website. Now, how do you get there? Well, that's a very good question. Oh, well, this is a on the chin. We're building back to find you anyway. We're building the same back. Yeah, we've done that one. So inbound marketing yeah. is a process which involves attracting your customers, giving your customers information and delighting them at the, and getting them to customers. So the first thing we want to do when we're creating these sort of website experiences is what are all the questions that my customers might have about my product? What are all the questions my staff have about my product? What are all the questions that I would have about my product because I'm buying my own product? So this is part number one, which I want you guys to, to work on, is that go ahead and write down all the questions, not now, because it's taking ages. Tonight, tomorrow in the meeting, sit down with your staff, get on the Google Cloud or the Microsoft Cloud, they've got cloud software working for them. Put it up and you'll be braver than that. There it is. Okay, so that's tip number one, get on the Google Cloud. Okay, five bucks a month. Right. Get your money on Google Cloud. Here's my tip counter for you, <laughs> oh, the funnel of love, okay, yeah, so the funnel of love, good point, yeah. Muted. So, so tip number two is get yourself on the Google Cloud. It's five bucks a month, Google Cloud for business. It allows you to share documents in the cloud so more than one person can write on a website, a WordPress, a um, word processing document at once. So here at the Kingdom, what we did, we sat down for an hour and said, righto, Everybody type all the questions on the same document you can think about. Within one hour, we had effectively 700 questions. So do that with your business. 700 questions, every single thing you can think of as a consumer. What would you be asking if you're buying your product? Because this is exactly the same behavior that you exhibit when you are buying something. What does it cost for a sloping site house? How fast can my Porsche 35682 turbo go? Okay. <laughs> If I'm if I wanted to buy a crayfish, is it imported in Australia, Miss Ferguson? <laughs> okay, that's what we write. We write long tail keywords. We put information in. I'm looking for a function. I want to do a wedding in Adelaide, Adelaide Oval. Okay, these are the things that we're putting in. Boarding house schools in private Adelaide. Okay, boarding house private schools, 1.5 kilometres city. These are the terms we're putting into Google when we're searching. So think about what you would put into Google for your business. Write those questions down. Put them in the cloud. And then the cool bit, start answering the bloody things. Okay. Now, here's a tip. Tip number three. Three? Yeah. Tip number three. Don't try and type it all up. Okay. Whack an iPhone or a phone in the middle of the table. Stick it on record. And then just go and answer your questions. Appoint a person to ask the question. And then sit around the table and answer all the questions. And then you have an MP3 file. And you ship it off to one of the many sites available on the internet, which will type that for you. Okay. What was on we used yesterday? Casting.com. Casting.com. Tip number four. Casting.com. Casting. Casting, I think it is. Yeah. Casting.com. Casting. 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 Cas
Oh, too fast? No, sorry, 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 sorry. Slow down. She does that too. Okay, so casting.com. Okay. Ship off your MP3 file to those guys and they will they'll take your dictation and return it back as text. Okay, so suddenly you've got the text for 700 web pages. Okay. Now, of course, when we talk about inbound marketing, the idea light bulb just going off in your mind is because if you go ahead and put those 700 shops into your shop, I mean 700 web pages into your site, what do you think Google organic search is going to do? Lose its, you're going to blow its head off, right? Yeah. You're going to crush it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. You're going to lose, Google's going to lose its mind. Like, of, all the, of the 65 billion pages out there, you're going to put 700 up and Google's going to lose its shit. <laughs> okay, absolutely right, Ricola. Google's going to love it, right? So Google's going to love the fact you suddenly gave it 700 more pages about this particular topic you're an expert on for them to provide answers to their peeps. They are going to like it, aren't they? They're going to love it, particularly if somebody actually asks the question that you're answering. And believe me, they will. And why do we say this with so much confidence? Because of this. Tip one, the funnel of love. <laughs> because people want to find out about their stuff. They want to research their stuff. And the higher the dollar value of your product or your service, the longer this funnel goes and the more the page count goes up. So if you are in a product which is complicated, expensive, niche market, then it's absolutely critical that you are providing answers to their questions. Absolutely critical. Who here can honestly put their hand up and say that they're doing a great job of answering their questions of their customers? Agree. Because we're not there yet either. We've done 180 pages. 180 shops on a shopping centre. So, takeaway points before I ding the next slide. I don't even know what it is. This is like playing slide lotto. <laughs> okay. Takeaway points. Make sure you're answering the questions of your customers. Make sure you're there getting in first because remember if you don't answer the question who's going to answer it on Google? Your competitors. Your competitors are going to answer those questions on Google. Is that what you want? And I always laugh when I see the brand advertising go out because that's perfect. Once again the category is defined. Someone goes to Google after they've checked out Holden Utes and if you're not on Google you're screwed. Now that's great for small business because it can be in a situation where if let's say Holden does advertise and you're making XYZ Ute then suddenly your category gets noticed and you're, you're on the internet. It's game on. Okay, so this is the most liberating world we could ever be in in terms of setting up a small business <clears throat> or setting up a business that's niche. Neil sells the KTIG welder. Spot welder, is it? What do, how do you actually describe your product? Keyhole welding. Keyhole welding. Brand new category, never before invented. Phenomenal. It is a phenomenal product, okay? Kicking goals. GE is killing it over in the US with it. 90% speed up time in welding. So you can build a submarine in like 10 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So how does... Yeah, tip number four. Yeah, people say how people speak to new. So how do you advertise that 20 years ago? It's impossible, right? It's virtually impossible. Now you can because now you can answer all the questions of what people are asking about welding and related issues, and on the net it comes, and up you come as a solution. Question: 10-minute submarine? Yeah, 10-minute submarine. Absolutely. How to build a 10-minute submarine? And your answer would be, well, you can't, but you can. This is as fast as you possibly can make it. If you're thinking about, yeah, we can make one this big. Okay. <laughs> So the other thing about this, which is really nice, is that you also get to set the agenda. If you're found first, you get to set the agenda because people are looking for information that they can trust, right? So what's the number one most important thing? And ladies, you can feel free to answer this one, okay? If I come up to you in a bar and start talking about myself the whole time, am I attracted to you, Kristen? Not at all. Right, sorry. <laughs> okay. Damn it. Okay. So don't talk about yourself. Okay, the most important thing you can do is talk about how you help the customer. How do you help the customer? How does your product help the customer? How does your content help them get the job done? Not how hot I am, take me home, put me out, I'm on fire, Kristen. It's not that at all. It's how I help the customer. How I'm helping you. Pardon? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's about how I help the customer, how we help the customer, how what you do helps the customer. Because who do they care about most? Themselves. They only care about themselves. Okay, so many websites, and we were doing this just eight months ago, six months ago, talk about how great we are. We throw our awards out. We've got them. We just threw them in the bucket. We don't use them anymore because they're not relevant. They're about us. It's not about us. It's about you. It's about you as customers, and every single one of you people who are trying to sell something to somebody need to realize that it's about the customer, and it's about how you help them. So on their journey, the more that you are interested in helping them, the more they are going to trust you down the funnel of love. And the minute they don't trust you, what do they do? 
Ex Correct. Front page or die syndrome. If you're not on the front page answering the question, what do they do? They research or they go to someone else. Right? So they're out of there. The minute they don't trust you. So the minute you get a little bit excited, start talking about yourself, it's too early, you're out. You're gone. Front page or die is trending back here. Yeah. Front page or die. <laughs> Sick. Is that tip number six? <laughs> okay. So the minute you don't lose their trust, you're out. So don't talk about yourself ever. Okay? Until down here when you can actually start talking about yourself. Why is this point so important? It's because they trust you both at this stage. They're actually happy. This is like 12.30. Finally, after buying Kristen six drinks, talking to a wing girl, we're finally having a good conversation here. Okay? So at this point in time, there's trust occurring, which is really important. Okay, ding the button. I don't know what's next. Let's have a go. Oh, we nailed that. Okay, so content marketing is all about making sure that your content content is in the hands of the people that count most, which is your customers. The internet gives you a wonderful swing at this because it's very easy. You start typing and get it up on site. And away you go. Piece of cake. And then Google does the rest. Organic search goes nuts. Getting back to Mikhail's point, it goes, it blows its head off. Organic search. Beautiful. Next one, ZJ. Oh, awesome. Good slide. Okay. So this slide says, find out how HubSpot increased our web traffic by 700% in just two months. All right, so now I'm going to talk a bit about HubSpot and the tools of the internet to do this. Now, we've just become HubSpot certified um, partners in, in Adelaide. It's quite remarkable that in this country, we have yet to hear of this phenomenal segment of market called automated marketing software. In the US, you have Infusionsoft, you have Oracle's Eloqua, you have... Um, Pardo by Salesforce, you have HubSpot and Marketo. These are all huge brands. It's a huge industry to the point where if there were 100 people in this room, I would poll them and the 98, and Americans being they are, 98 would put their hand up really high, not like us could be Australians like this. 98 would be in the air, out of 100 would know what that plat those platforms are. And 75 out of 100 would have them. In Australia, no one's heard of them and no one's got them. It's quite remarkable. So there is a gold mine opportunity for you all to buy HubSpot from us and get yourself set up in a way which is absolutely powerful and all-conquering. And I know you're saying he's just trying to sell you, and I am, but I'm going to tell you why right now. Okay. So when we talk about content marketing, and we might go to a HubSpot demo, please, EJ. Oh, yeah, because I know the Saints girls want to see it, and they've got a role pretty soon. So uh, I promised them we'd go early on this one. So we talk about this. Now, this is all well and good to have the theory of the funnel of love, and it's all well and good to create the content, but how do you get people there? And how do you get people to actually see it? And what, how do you create it? What platforms? Who's got time to make website pages? Who's got time to make this all happen? So just, just go command tab. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. So what, that's perfect. So what HubSpot is, is they collect, and just go to, we're on dashboard. I just go to dashboard. So HubSpot is a collection of internet tools that you would otherwise use all incorporated in one beautiful cloud platform, okay? And so what we have here with HubSpot is we have the capacity to blog, create site pages, create email outs, have our customers in there, have our customer lists in there. We can also manage our keywords, and we can effectively manage the entire marketing process. And there's some really cool things about this. This is a massive piece of software. It's taken me as a software expert about four months to learn it all. It's a huge piece of software, but it's phenomenally powerful. And so what does it do, first of all? Well, the first thing it does... Is you t and we'll go to our keyword rankings, thanks, EJ, under reports. So we go to um, in Sorry. So with HubSpot, we set it up by saying, right, what are the keywords that are relevant to our business? And this here is stuff you might buy using AdWords, the stuff which you might actually pay for, but this is what drives us. So in our case here, we've, had, we've got 45 keywords organically ranked in the top three. So we've got 677 keywords we put into the system, and HubSpot automatically tells us how we're trending in terms of Google. Very important. Because the Google Analytics tool is a bloody pain in the ass. Who can actually use it properly? I'm a halfer. It's a very difficult tool to work. Powerful. But HubSpot just puts a beautiful wrap over the front of it and effectively shows you that we have 677 keywords. And we're talking about stuff like the Kingdom Adelaide, HubSpot Workshops Melbourne, Innovative Adelaide Advertising Agency. So these are all the things that people put into our system all the things that people put into Google, I'm sorry, they look into Google and say, okay, what, what are we going to search? And this tells us that, right, we are currently ranked one, and there's a difficulty level. Okay, you're actually pretty hard to get number 
one there, ZJ. That's pretty good, 63. Anyway, so what this means is that if you search 42 of the, 44 of these words, we come up on front page. Free. Free. Okay, no cost. So what does that do, Michaela, to our, to our um, website clicks? With Google being so happy and friendly, it blows the, blows the brain off Google. So yeah. straight away, you're in a situation where your organic search is increasing because you are putting the words and the content that Google's looking for in the right spot. So this tells you how successful you are at doing that. We've got a goal of 100 keywords in the top three by the end of May. That is keeping me up. Okay, it's making life hard. So here we've got, just scroll up again. <laughs> 81 keywords in the top 10. Okay, 748 website hits have come from organic traffic in the last 30 days. So HubSpot is a tool which allows you to put those keywords in. So if you've got HubSpot, you put your keywords in there and you'll start seeing them. When we first put someone's keywords in here, we've just done it for another company, shocking, shocking, nothing is typically the response. It's our job as their consultant to get their content in there and that will then grow. That will increase that. And so suddenly you're getting found on Google without a cent being spent. Free marketing. Google Organic. Okay, so let's go to our, um, go to our blog page. So how do we do this? How do we create this content? So blogging, and Christian, you've got the pad there. Let's kick off on our little baby show. We'll talk about talk about blogging. Perfect. Yeah. Why you need to get started on your blog right now? This is point four. The reason why you need to get started on your blog right now is because when you write on your blog with your keywords in mind, Google starts picking you up and saying, yeah, I love you. Okay, I love you for that. And so what we see here, and this is our month compared to our previous month, which is a record, in this situation we're seeing I'm going to fumble that all day. We're seeing the number of clicks that have come from the stories we created. So what we have here is eight ideas you can steal from a record website growth. Yesterday, 31 clicks. Gamification, 36. Complete bomb. Okay. Look at the word. The word that killed that one. We got one hit out of that. Is our. We started talking about ourselves. Yeah. Went nowhere. Okay. And this is part of the process. Why live stream will change your life. 27. So what we have here are all the clicks created from our blog. So you need to start blogging right now. Have fun with your brand. Have fun with the have fun with the process of blogging. Create content. Cre get your your opinions about how you help your customers out there. Start blogging today, because what will that do? Every single time you blog with your keywords that you identify are important to you, you will start getting traction on Google and people finding your pages. Who's got a blog? Hand up. Come on, Rob. You can do it. There you go. One person. Okay. <laughs> One person. So let me just di divert my conversation briefly. Who's heard of Uber? Okay. Airbnb. Okay. Disruptive businesses that have stomped in from overseas and changed our market in months, weeks even. Okay. Is there a disruptive business that's going to walk into your market and stomp on your business like that? Is there one? And do you know about it right now? Of course you don't. And is there an entire West Coast of the US programming like Mad Men, getting venture capitalists to, to destroy your industry? Absolutely. And you'd be aware of that, wouldn't it? How many, how, what is it like in California compared to here? It blows your head off, doesn't it? Completely mind-blowing. So can you afford to sit back and not do this? Absolutely no way. Because you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's about to attack you. You don't know where the Indians are coming over the mountains and about to destroy your camp. Okay? So you've got to get off your backsides, people, and blog. You have to start blogging because you have to be found on the internet. It's part of our funnel of love. So get the blog happening straight away. And HubSpot allows you to track your success. So what we're seeing here in our situation is what works and what doesn't. And if we go to view all published posts, please, Mr. Music. <laughs> That's great. No, you're doing well. Uh, so and click on views. We'll sort by views. So why are responsive websites hotter than Jennifer Lawrence? A complete, to stole a name, went nuts. 308. Fantastic. Basil Baldy Towers, 118. So this is a list of our top blogs, and we only do this for three months. Okay. So what this is doing is driving substantial traffic. So this is largely responsible for our website growth. And to put it in context, we have a very difficult business to market as an advertising agency because 0.2% of the marketplace actually want to hear about what we've got to say. Marketing managers predominantly. Okay. So advertising is really hard. In fact, I wrote a page about this last night saying how, how much we sucked at it. We're terrible at it. 
Because, but what we've done is we started out pretty much running at 400 hits per month. We hit 700 when we were on the Gruen transfer twice. We won once. That was kind of fun um, in the pitch. But that's all we got on our website. We couldn't grow our website. Largely disinterested. No our shopping center was bare. There were four pages. That was it. Looked good. Four great looking shops, but no other shops. Boring shopping center. So then we started HubSpot. And instead of going, we were at 300 in January. 1,300 first month. 1,500 next month. 2,500 last month, and we're now trending to 3,200 website hits. Pardon? And you're all here. Very good point. It's a very good point. You're all here. So HubSpot created a platform for us to skyrocket our website clicks. It's called the hockey stick effect. It is not uncommon. Remember that HubSpot and these platforms have been in the US for years. It's a very established marketplace. There are 15,000 HubSpot customers in 90 different countries. Okay, so this is, these case studies, there are 85 case studies in HubSpot alone because they're content marketing experts. They get 250,000 clicks to their website per day and don't pay for a cent of it. So this hockey stick effect is common for all businesses that embrace content marketing. So if you're embracing content marketing, then you are able to get this working for you. And of course, it's a numbers game. So what happens if you get one deal from 100 clicks, just add a zero. 10 deals from 1,000. 100 deals from 10,000 and on it goes, okay? So content marketing provides you the content, the, the, the website clicks, the activity to get your website clicks and blogging is a major part of that, okay? So we've got two sections, blogging versus site pages. What's the difference? Well, blog allows you to be more creative and more fun with it. You can actually have different blogs, different types of blogs. So we're just about to create another blog with Zahn who is very experienced, incredibly knowledgeable in really good, Sorry, camera. Really good social media tools like Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, a whiz at it, right? So she's going to have fun. We're going to create a, a blog for Zahn's. What do we call it? Bubbles for uh, <laughs> content and bubbles. Yeah, it's going to be a fun blog, right? That's different from my advertising facts blog. We talk about the facts and the questions about advertising. And this one's our creative blog, which we're just trying to create more interesting stuff. So blogging lets you categorize quite happily what stuff you're talking about. Now, your site pages, though, are about your business. Your site pages are about your business predominantly. They can be both, but typically the site pages are about your business, what people would go to when they're searching, but blogs are a bit of fun. Blogs are a bit of everything else. The commentary, a bit more sugar compared to steak. But of course, every time you create one, it stays there forever. The beautiful thing about content marketing is whilst you need to put effort in, once you create, these pages stay there forever. And what does Google think of that, Makala? Woohoo! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're a great prop. <laughs> I think woo! Okay. So... Let's go and have a look at our email. That's me again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So HubSpot, who uses MailChimp? Put them right up. Come on, ladies. That's it, Kristen. So one, two, you guys do, three, four. Right, MailChimp's a great start. It's a bit like Lego to building the sub in 10 minutes, right? <laughs> so Lego, it's a bit of a start. Lego before you become a construction worker or an architect. Okay, MailChimp's an okay start. MailChimp lets you have one list, a couple lists, and a bit of action. Yeah. Okay, so scrolling down. <laughs> I'll go, to, go up here, sorry. <laughs> Send. So one of the things we learned with our email out, right, is that yesterday we sent one. You guys got it. Thank you very much for, for looking at it. 2,761 cent. Open rate, 29.99%. It's a new record, actually. What we discovered with email is that everyone uses email, right? Email market, right, right. Email marketing, okay, email lists are the one thing you guys can own. So point number 62, whatever we're up to, okay. <laughs> Don't worry about social media per se so much. It's about the email names, okay. Get your email names and keep them and treasure them. Look for your sources. Email is gold because why? Well, good old Mark Zuckerberg a couple of years ago decided to change the whole the way the like engine works. So you could, it was brilliant. You could actually put a story up and all your friends would see it and they liked you, they chose to see it, that was great. Then suddenly he decides, okay, the people that chose to want to see your stuff no longer can. They're not allowed to. So 8% reach, 5 to 8% reach on Facebook now if you post. So you post a story to your mates who chose to and wanted to see your stuff, no longer you can't. It's a bit of a scam, really. You have to pay to play. Who's doing paid posting for Facebook? Okay, stop immediately. Right? And I'll tell you why. I'll come back to that point. Footnote. Reason why these guys are crazy and have to stop. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be lunch lunchtime. Uh, okay, so the point was that, importantly, 
you have to create a situation where you control it because Zuckerberg took, has got control of that. Twitter's got control of your list. Instagram's got control of your list. These other, meth, these other platforms are great. We love them. And, we'll, and shortly after the break, I'll tell you why we love them. But email is the one thing you own. So let's look at some email sources. Who could tell me one? Who's got one email source where they get their email names from? Sorry, um, awesome. Brilliant. That's another point for Nicole. She's in front. She's awesome. Okay. What's another way of getting an email address? Web, web inquiries. Web inquiries, yeah. Competitions, another way? We trade shows. Trade shows. Swap business cards. There's an idea. Everyone swap it with everyone business cards at the break today. Okay. Yes, son. Asking for one. Asking for your email address. Great idea. Okay. Ask for your email address. Absolutely. LinkedIn. Squillions of them. Okay. Squillions of LinkedIn addresses, email addresses. Okay. Facebook's got email addresses. Check out the person who left and their drawers. They've got business cards they left behind. Okay. <laughs> Check out the drawers in general. <laughs> okay. So there's lots of sources of business cards. And importantly, treasure them on them. So tip number six, or whatever up to, make sure that you are getting those email addresses and building your list. Who knows off the top of their head how many emails they've got in the list? Oh, you don't have to tell me. Okay. So one person. So that email list, when you talk about gamification, when you talk about the numbers that make bean counters happy, which I think is the last point in that document there, it's only a half a score, we haven't quite got there yet. But importantly, gamification means you want to look at the stats which are really important to your business. And those stats are things that you can be motivated to achieve. And one of the stats which I urge you all to consider is emails. Because you own it, you control it, and you can talk to it whenever you feel like it. Okay? And you've got to start at one. Kim Kardashian's got like, what, two million Instagram followers? But you know, she started with one at some stage. I'm like, wow, she's got two million, it's amazing. And she had 10 at one stage. And to get to 100, she went through 50. And to get to 10,000, she went through 5,000. So even if you've got one email list, and it's your PA, it doesn't matter, send her an email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> yeah. So get, <laughs> God. so get those email addresses and start building your list and live and die by that number. Have a target at Nextbyte and let's remember that Nextbyte, I was there 10 years ago, at Nextbyte, it was, and ZJ was part of it, in 1997, 98, we made our sales guys have a target of getting five email addresses per day. We had 80 of them. And so we've got 400 email addresses per day going into our system. So that's 2,000 email addresses per week. Now, they didn't always achieve that, but at least 1,000 were going there every single week. So back in 1997, 98, we had 50,000 email addresses in our Nextbyte database, and we sold those stories off. So when we did an EDM out, a mail out, we were actually selling off the stories to Microsoft and Hewlett Packard and Epson because they couldn't get their act together and they needed access to the marketplace. So we basically sold our stories, 2,000 bucks a pop. Our email became a cost profit center, bean counters. Sound good, Mark? Good idea? Making profit out of email? Yeah, profit out of marketing. Who knew? Okay. So profit came from selling those email stories. And this is 18 years ago. 18 years ago. So now is the time in 2015 to start gathering email addresses and getting them into a list. Now, HubSpot is awesome because HubSpot, first of all, tells you, first of all, who's opening what. And we've got a range of different seminars happening. HubSpot allows us to have, allows us to have different lists. Okay, so we've got up to 35 different lists of emails, which any one person can be a part of, and we can hit 5, 10, 300, 700, whatever. We're currently targeting swimming pool people in Western Australia. We're sending to them. There's only five, but we can see the results, right? What's very cool about HubSpot is that we can actually see who has been on the website. We can see who has clicked where, and I ask you to go to Marco's record. So HubSpot lets us view... Marco works here, so I won't go into somebody else's record as part of the uh, organisation. So Marco, yeah, there we go. Yep, so Marco, so HubSpot lets us get vision into who is actually surfing your website. And Sidekick, a HubSpot product, shows us when they're on there. So last night at 11 o'clock when I was working, I had a guy who I'm friends with. This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here we go. So HubSpot shows us every single thing that they have clicked on. 
It shows us the web page they've clicked on. It shows us the emails they've clicked on. It shows us the forms they've clicked. So you are able to see every single part of the funnel that your customers are touching. So how is this the world's most amazing thing? It's because first of all, up here, cold calling used to be, oh, good day, it's Adam here calling from the kingdom. Would you like to buy my stuff? No, bugger off, mate. Thanks. Okay. But now we're able to watch our customers take in our content. We watch them come down the funnel. We watch and we watch and we watch. And finally, we say, yeah, we're ready to talk to you guys. We're happy to talk. And they're ready to talk to us because they've gone the journey down the tunnel of the funnel of love. They've gone the journey. So let's have a look at the interactions from, uh, from May. Sorry, what was that? Yep. And scroll down. The forms, the emails, I'm just looking for April. Let's have a look at the web page. It's Oh, he's such a boring person because he's a tester. Show submission. Oh, we can see the forms he's clicked on there. That's all testing stuff, though. Uh, I don't want to show a real customer, so I'm just interactions from February. Rhiannon, did you say that? Oh, you're one of our top people, though. No, I can't because I don't want to expose the data. Yeah, okay. So Marco's boring, but I don't want to show personal data. But the bottom line is that you can see all the website pages that the person's clicked on. Okay. Now, what's really cool about this is that that would be quite tough work, given that we just sent 2,500 emails, uh, there were 850 clicked, so I can't, we don't have time to go through every single person's record like this. As beautiful as it is, as in, it's, it's like a serious photo, as enjoyable as that is, we haven't got time. So what HubSpot does is that HubSpot allows us to point score. It allows us to point score. So it allocates a point for every website page that's been clicked on, it allocates five to ten points for an ebook download or a seminar. It allocates points for email for, for any kind of form submission. And so what it means is by the time we get down to here, we'll look at people from one to fifteen and we don't even say anything to them. One to fifteen is we're letting them go through the process at the top here because they're only brand new. If we jump in at one, it's just like Kristen at eight o'clock with me. No chance. Bugger off, Adam. You slime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what it'd be, wouldn't it? I can see you calling me a slime. Right, fair call too. At 8 o'clock, what am I doing? <laughs> Oh, that's ridiculous. That's, what, that's the sort of shit that goes on the Olympic Games Village, doesn't it, Beck? Okay. So, so here at one, no go. Now, 15 to 30, we're watching them a little bit closer. Okay? So let's go to our list. The contacts. List. That was better. Oh, I love it. It was quick. Yeah, it's sync. Let's go across to HubSpot, HubSpot score, 75 to 100, 50 to 75. Oh, you've gone to the one spot. There's none. Like, we won't go in the list. Don't go because it's private. But uh, what we see, though, is we mark up inquiries, 30 to 50 points, 50 to 75, 75 to 100. And we're going to hold a party for the dudes that make it to 100. They're going to go to dinner on us. Rhiannon, you're close. It's you and another guy, okay? It's you and another guy that are down to the, the 100s. You're, you're both in here, and it's first to 100 gets to go to dinner on us, okay? So, yeah, I'm out with Kristen. Uh, so... So what do you think happens at 100 or 75 land and 100? How easy do you think it's going to be to at least get a meeting, have a chat? VBE. Very bloody easy. Okay. So since we implemented HubSpot three months ago, we are 19 out of 20 meetings. 19 out of 20. The entire five years before cold calling, we had about six out of 700. It was a wipeout by comparison. So HubSpot absolutely annihilates... Any question of it being worth it when you start talking 19 out of 20 meetings in a high consultative, high ticket value sale process. And a lot of you are in this room doing that. Okay, so 19 out of 20 meetings here. Why? Well, because we're only talking to the people that are down here. Now, we watch the 15 to 30s and the 30 to 50s, and about here we're starting to say, okay, let's really focus in on this person. What can we specifically do for that person to engage them more now we know we're here? That could easily be an invite to the footy to Superbox or an invitation to the quarter club dinner or it could be some sort of event. Now, how do we typically, how do you typically go and get your events filled? Oh, Jesus, I'll, I'll call these people. Oh, these blokes, yeah, they're our customers. We'll call them. Herdy and Bevo can come because they're good fun and I know that half these people won't turn up. So, And you get there and you've got half your mates and you've got half your clients and you sort of took the clients. But, of course, you get at the end of the year and think, oh, was that corporate expenditure really worth that? Not really, no. Nah, didn't get any deals because you're still fishing the top level here. This allows you to say, right, let's go and attack those 30 to 50s who we know are very close and let's entertain them. And yet they'll say, yeah, and away you go. So HubSpot lead scoring, this is called lead scoring. 
So write down a term which is rampant in the US, lead scoring. Are you scoring your leads and do you have software to do that? Are you scoring your leads and do you have software to do that? And the answer is absolutely almost categorically in Australia, no. Has anybody got lead scoring? Good on you, champ. One. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, thank God for that. <laughs> so studies show that in Australia, one out of every 35 people have lead scoring. <laughs> so, so studies show that one out of 35 have it. Now, HubSpot makes it very easy for you. So we have our lists here. We've got three people in 50 to 70. <laughs> Sorry, caught you napping. Five to 15, 117 people have entered the pipeline. Okay. How many of those are we going to call, Kristen? None. Of course not. It's like buying a drink at 8.30. Oh, my God, not going to happen. Okay. We've got HubSpot score over 55, HubSpot score over 30, over 30, 33 people. Now, some of those are our mates. And then there's people like Rhiannon who are stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> but then you've got a list of who's in it. Now, what can I do with this list now? And this is why MailChimp is a toy, is I can specifically send an email to those people only. Okay, and in that process, HubSpot allows me to personalize every single part of that email. Dear Bevo, thanks for checking out this. Here's some more information that might be relevant. I know the web pages you're looking at. I can actually score if someone's looking at HubSpot, and we'll get to this stage of tech complexity. If someone's on my HubSpot pages, I'll give them high weighting. Okay, so the high weighting, I know you're looking at HubSpot. Here's some case studies I've found for your industry. Because what HubSpot also does is when I put your email address in there, it polls the internet and finds all the data related to you in a second. Okay, And it also shows me the companies that are like yours in a second. And so I've got all the information I need about you coming from the internet. So whatever what, what goes in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. Yes, Ryan. So if that's got a lead scoring on the competitors, you could have tracked them a little bit on the competitors. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what you're also able to do in HubSpot as a side point, I know you guys have got to go, so I'll show you this real quick, is that you can actually track your competitors' action in social media and all the actual parts of it. So it does have a, a port up here, competitors. So it will show you how it's all scoring in competitor land as well. right? So it does give you that chance. So if we scroll up here, we've got um, some of the research stuff we've been doing for other people, but we can see what's happening with them and Jam Shop and KWP, for example, that's, that's rates their website. Uh, the traffic, etc. So we can see what's going on with the rest of the marketplace. Okay. So yes, you can absolutely. But in terms of getting back to HubSpot and our list, 35 are different lists. We'll have probably 100 lists by the end of the uh, next two or three months because each one of those lists will be specific to that person, and we will tailor make that content. And we can put the name of the person in. We can actually put the coffee order. Mate, here's a cup of vouchers for free coffee. I know you love a cappuccino. We can write that in HubSpot because the customization is there. So what does Mark, who's sitting in our 30 to 50, think of us in terms of what we're doing here? He's thinking we're pretty cool, isn't he? This company likes me. This company is providing information I need. This company is aware of what I'm doing. This company is familiar with me. And remember what it's all about in the first place? Me. You. Okay? So importantly, this lead scoring process allows you to automate what is a very difficult thing. So if we scroll up. So 33 is over 30. So when I now go and say to Zahn, who was a very accomplished, incredible telemarketing salesperson meeting getter. Previously, I'd send her to the Dungeon of Doom, which is our telemarketing room, and she would get three out of 20 calls picked up and no meetings and no fault of her own because people don't want to take calls. They don't want to be interrupted. Now, when she goes up to the room with the 50s, the 30s and 50s, 33 to 50, 33 5, she only has to make about three calls a week because what do we get out of those three calls? Three meetings, right? A HubSpot allows us to do that. If I sent upstairs to go and call the 117 in the 5 to 15 bracket, what would a ratio be? Well, it'd be better than zero. It'd be better than the zeros. There'd be a little bit of trust there. But why would you bother? Why would you bother? So how much time is being spent in your organization right now focusing on the zeros? And do you know? And the answer is you don't. So when you talk about ROI and software, when you talk about the cost of software, HubSpot's minimum 15,000 bucks a year. It's expensive. It's a good investment, though. What time is being spent chasing zeros in your organization? And do you even know? And wouldn't that be good to know? Because that's expensive, right? Okay, ladies and saints, I know you've got to go. We'll have a bigger demo. Let's break for coffee and tea, guys. Have a, have a chat, network, discover some secrets, plenty of cake, loads of Tim Tams. 
Bakara and Alex are here to help you with your beverages, and we'll be back in probably 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Right, on, let's get back into it. Let's get our slides back up. Okay, so I'll go back to my slides, and I better check our checklist agenda here. Kristen, how are we rolling with what we've got on screen there? Let's have a look at it. So I reckon we've ticked off a few. So inbound marketing, we've done that, absolutely. Why well, you need to start your blog right now, that's perhaps you need a scribe, I reckon. Yeah, there we go, perfect, yep. Yep. We've ticked off inbound marketing, how it works, the benefit of content, yep, that's good. That's perfect, gross sales fast, we've done that. Done the blog one, perfect. Right, so we'll get stuck into social media stuff now, that's really important. So we'll just go back to my random slide lotto, please, EJ. Sorry, it's got 68 things. So Periscope, for those that don't know, Periscope is live streaming to the internet through Twitter. So at the moment we're streaming live. What's our biggest count so far, six? Uh, no, we've got 45 viewers. 45 viewers, live on the internet. Okay, so, um, so I've just given you a massive plug to the whole world, mate. <laughs> and... Uh, and a bunch of people want to come to Mills uh, Shopping Centre. That's given a few ideas to Lowry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to the slides. Here we go. What's next? We're going to start. So HubSpot, getting back to our point. Don't. That's cool. Facebook pages for business. Excellent. Done. Facebook pages for business. <laughs> do they work? So we're going to start talking about social media. So where does social media fit into this process? And if you remember the reason why we got you in here was because we said content is fire and social is petrol. That was the name of today's session. Content is fire, social is petrol. So the content we create here is the fire. And social media is just like tipping petrol straight on top of that fire and making it go bang. So let's think about that. If you go to the effort of making a blog, which is terrific, Google spiders will find you. Okay, they will find you eventually. But what we have with social media is the capacity to promote that information to the audiences that may be listening to us. And so one of the questions I have is on that rolled up piece of paper is, should you be doing social media? The answer is absolutely. Okay, absolutely. And how? Well, every single platform is different. And this is not a matter of saying, okay, receptionist, please go and post stuff on Facebook just because you know how to do, run your weekend and your life on it. It's not that at all. Every single social media platform has its very own benefits and has its very own science attached to that. And so it's important to understand a bit about them. We'll talk about them now. So we talk about Facebook pages for business, do they work? And the answer is, in terms of likes and reach, not really, very well. There's better platforms. Google Plus is better, for example. One of the things we learned out of our HubSpot experience is that we actually can tell who's going to our website and why they're getting there. And Google Plus is as powerful as Facebook, even though we don't know how to use it. <laughs> That's true, we do. No, we know how to use it. But it's a confusing interface, especially on desktop. It's great on mobile. But who's using Google Plus every day? Not many people, two, two timid hands. Okay, It's actually a really interesting space to read. It's actually quite good, particularly on the mobile. Okay, Better than Great Facebook. Content. Great content, yeah. So Google Plus drives content better than Facebook does. Facebook pages for businesses. That's a really good question. Yeah. The, the, my understanding of this in a very unscientific way is simply because in Facebook land it's restricted to 8% of your audience, whereas Google Plus is not restricted. And so Google Plus, when you put a post up, it's going to everybody who's following you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have like 100 followers, whereas we've got 900 on Facebook. Now we've got low numbers because no one wants to really hear from us. But some, I mean, for example, spend their shoes at 45,000. Okay. So 8%, 6 to 8% reach on Facebook. So that means that six people out of 100. So when we post something for 900 people, we get 40 people seeing it. But 100 people on Google Plus, they all see it. So that's the number one reason why Google Plus is more effective for us is because it's not gated in any way, whereas Facebook's gated. So Facebook pages of business, do they work? Not really that well. Unless you're using your Facebook page for business to get stuck into the ad manager. So the question before was who's doing promoted posts? Was it a couple of people? The reason why you've got to stop is this. It's because that's probably Facebook's biggest scam, and that's live on the internet. Sue me, Zuckerberg. It's a scam, okay? It's simply because all they're doing is getting you to, to pay to talk to your audience, but there's far better ways inside the ad manager to do the same thing. In fact, you can go to the ad manager, promote that exact same post in the same way and get better reach for the exact same process, but it's in the ad manager. 
So you just have to get to the ad manager or the power editor to do that. Now, pixel tracking is a situation where a piece of code is inserted into your website that effectively allows Facebook to know that you've gone to a website. And so what we do with our internet advertising is we will, for example, with our seminars, we will go to Facebook, set up an audience, set up our pixel tracking code, and it will then pull automatically all the visitors from the last 60 days that have been to our website into our Facebook audience. So our Facebook page allows us to do that, for business allows us to do that. And so that means that we've got, say, 700 people have come to our web page. So then we're able to advertise per 1,000 impressions for a very low price to those 700 people who have been to our website, the very same message that they saw on our website. So it allows us to get recurring advertising occurring, which is this, the key to advertising, of the same thing over and over again to our people for a very, very low cost. So, for example, in coming to this seminar, some of you might have clicked off the internet. We had 60 clicks. It was costing us 29 cents a click to get people to our website to go to that page. So promoted posts will cost you quite a lot of money. But in our case, we spent $40. And some of you would have got sick of seeing it because the stats showed me that there was actually 25 to 30 times repetition for the audience, the very small audience, that came... <coughs> that were being pulled from our website. So organically, every day that goes past, everyone who goes to visit our website then starts seeing our messages on Facebook. And now this is happening the world over. And you would know, because when you go to Facebook, it's like, God, how come I'm still getting zero notices? How come I'm still getting these people talking to me? Okay, brand repetition. Now there are significant strategies. <laughs> That's a squiggle. <laughs> there are significant strategies which allow you and this is what we do, is to create strategies to go backwards and forwards. So if you go to a web page specifically, you come back to another message on Facebook. If you go to another web page, you come back to another specific message. And so the power editor is, and, the, and the Facebook ad engine at the back end is very, very, very powerful. And so do Facebook pages of business work? Well, they work in a way which is not immediately obvious. Trying to go out and get lots of likes on your Facebook page, you could easily argue it's a waste of time. Don't worry about it too much. Let them organically grow. Don't worry about it. Don't try and grow your light base too much. Certain businesses can do it quite easily, retail, fast-moving consumer goods. But those that are in business, it's a bit harder. So don't worry about it. But use it to get into the ad manager. So do they work? The back end works really, really well. Really well. Yes, it's a shiny red Ferrari. What makes it so pretty? It's not the red paint. It's a great engine that goes on inside it. So think of it that way. The Facebook engine is phenomenal. And if you need help, you absolutely need to come and see us for this one because we can make... Small budgets do incredible things. So when someone says to me, should I do above the line advertising, the first thing, and I had a person, a friend of mine the other day, say, I want to go on Fox Sports, 30 grand of advertising. I said, well, mate, I can get you 60,000 clicks on your website. Do you want to do it really? Through Facebook remarketing. So advertising agencies and what we do is an investment because we save you money from doing stupid stuff. And this is one of them. It's a big one. Questions about that, promoted post people. So you guys are promoting? Yeah, so we're doing sponsored ads. Sponsored ads are very close. They're not, not dissimilar. Okay, sponsored ads are great also because, and this is another part of that back end, you have to be inside the back end, is that sponsored ads allow you to pick your target audience, okay, which is very good from that point of view. Now, LinkedIn is even better, okay? So LinkedIn is a professional network. The great thing about LinkedIn is you can target your actual market by job description, okay? Sensational. So we can actually, and we do, run a small ad, 20 bucks a week, targeting marketing managers and CEOs only. It's 3,000 small audience. So that allows you to target the people that you want to speak to only. So you guys want to speak to investors, or well, you can speak to only investors, VCs. You, there might be 35 of them in Adelaide, and that's it. And you can just hit them over and over again. It won't cost you much money. The big mistake that people make, especially up here land, is they'll go and buy, like my mate wants to go and buy Foxtel advertising for 30 grand. They'll go and pay for 100% of the market and only be speaking to 0.2% or 1% of the market. Right? So they buy all that extra, 99%, which is a waste of money. 1% need their product. See it all the time. Port Lincoln Weddings. Sorry, I'm live on the internet. Port Lincoln, are advertising, these dudes are advertising weddings at Port Lincoln on the back of buses in Adelaide. So with all due respect, that's a big waste of money. Because how many people are in Adelaide right now about to get married and how many people are about to go to Port Lincoln and are driving? 
We're talking about a very small target market, but they're paying big money. They're paying money for that. So what they can do on Facebook is add, say, righto, let's have a look at all the people that are engaged, aged between 25 to 30, because that's our marketplace, living in Adelaide, okay, interested in fishing. All that can be targeted through Facebook pages at the back end. And then they can get a very small subset. If they want to go and spend the, 40, the 30 grand they spent on bus packs into that space, they will rain down like the heavens clicks. But what's better for them to do? What's better for those guys to do with their money? Test. Who's been listening? HubSpot. HubSpot. Because why? Content marketing is far more intelligent for them as a wedding venue in Port Lincoln because who's, how much, who's, who's engaged or getting married or been married recently? I know you and I are because I'm picking up the bar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how much research got done on the internet in hours? How many hours? Yeah, how many? How many? No, it's Yeah, what, what about 200 hours? Sure. 200 hours, okay. 200 hours. And we're not even married yet. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's going to kill you. Yeah. I know, exactly. Yeah. So, hundreds of hours. Now, I ask you this how many hours were spent? How many hours? How many hours were spent chasing bus bags? None. <laughs> okay? No one is out there saying, I've got to find the bus back for that wedding venue. It's not going to happen, right? It's a hideously stupid idea. Sorry, guys. Don't do it, Port Lincoln. Oh, where is that? What are you doing, mate? I'm looking for the bus back with the wedding thing. I need the phone number. Go Google it, you dickhead. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so hours. And I bet you they're not there. Silly. Silly waste of money. Okay. Advertising people save you money because they, don't, they stop you from making stupid decisions. What we do with, it, with, with digital marketing money is make an opportunity cost decision. What's the best way to spend this money? And that person, I know, Mel, shut your ears. That person got conned by a rep from the, from the billboard station, just like the radio guys. They come in, oh, we got 40 slots, 4,000 bucks. You know, Mel Gregg's number one on the radio station. Listen up, okay? Oh, yeah, I run a station. That's wild. It means it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay? So you get three, hours, three ads in prime time and the rest in, in tough time. So... It's, it's a, not a scam, but it's close on it. It's not far off. It's old school. Back 25 years ago, it was good because how else would you find out about wedding venues? You had no other way. You'd get in the car and drive around all of them. And the yellow pages, RIP, was the way to do that. Okay? So, cool. Facebook pages, absolutely don't work. Get on board. It's complicated stuff. If you need help, give us a call. It is difficult, but uh, it's worth it if you get it working. And, when you've, and you've got to spend a fair bit of time on this. All marketing is investment. You need a fair bit of time. But if you want results, you can totally get them out of this space. Phenomenal case studies of this stuff working. Good one. Next magical random slide. Oh, yeah, cool. Instagram. Okay, so this is one of our posts. Six similarities between Kim Kardashian and Instagram. Red card. Too fast. <laughs> Six similarities between Kim and... So, in terms of our content, how do you get noticed? And so we're in this particular post leveraging off the popularity of somebody else, complete ripoff of somebody else, and using it to try and get attention. Now, this one didn't work very well because it's not specifically telling anybody what we're actually saying. So we actually repurpose this title. So, yeah, totally. So Instagram, so Instagram, so why would you use why would you use Instagram business? Who can tell me an answer? Zahn, far away. Brand engagement. So let's just give me a quick impromptu two minutes as to why you think Instagram is important for these people to know about. Um, I think from a brand perspective, so whether that's you know Adelaide Oval or Spenlow Shoes, it's really a great opportunity for me as a, a regular customer on the street to engage with you as a brand. And it gives you a face and it gives you a, I guess, an opportunity um, for me to, what, perfect example, at footy on the weekend, to take a photo of my kids with their face paint. Super excited, got our beanies on, hashtag the oval, tag the oval in an Instagram post. <coughs> Adelaide Oval saw it, picked it up, and commented. That makes me feel super special. Um, it also gives the, the, the brand themselves some content. Everything that goes onto Instagram can then be repurposed by the owner of the, of the account. Yep. So that could have been rebranded by Adelaide Oval. I'll speak to you about later. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointed. Your kids went face painted. Yeah. Um, spend those shoes. We, sit, we do a lot of that. We, we push the, the hashtag of spend those look and we ask the customers to take a photo of themselves in their shoes, hashtag with the hashtag, 
and then we repurpose that content. So it's a really, really easy platform to, to create content, uh, repurpose it, and build that brand <coughs> that um, sometimes you don't, you don't know that you've got. Yep. That now, importantly, from a business perspective, I know a few of you, I can tell by looking your face, are sitting back here and saying, oh, I'm too cool for school for Instagram, I don't need it. No, that's, that's for kids. That's for Zan and Makala. That's oh, I don't need that stuff, okay? Now, let me put it from this point of view. Who's got kids under the age of 20? How many of those kids desperately get home to read the back page of the advertiser sport like Mark and I used to when we were checking out the footy scores? Okay? How many of them have done that? Ever? None. How many of them rush home to sit down discipline style with you to watch the ABC News followed by 40 Towers at 17 on a Monday night. I'm recounting my childhood and Herdy knows what I'm talking about. None of them, right, ever. Good show though, they should. Classic, <laughs> timeless, still funny. Okay, how many of them are actually sitting down watching any pay, per, pay, pay TV at all or normal TV? None, they're all on YouTube. They're all on their iPhones. They're all on their iPods. They're all on Facebook. They're all on Insta. They're all on Twitter. They're on all these engagement channels and they are not touching in any form or fashion above the line stuff, okay? So you may think that you don't need to be there, but when these people grow up, they are your market. And if you are not there now, somebody else is. Now, if you're not building one Instagram follower on the way to 10, on the way to 2 million like Kim Kardashian, then you're not going to be able to talk to those people when they get to the age of 22, 23, 24, and they won't even know who you are. So your business will evaporate as the kids, as the retirees get out of the, unless you're like Herdy, financial planner, older people relevant. But even so, you're going to be dead by the time millennials come out. Sorry, mate. So you're all right. You're, you're future proof in your business. <laughs> okay. But unless you're actually engaging them now, as they get older, you are becoming less and less relevant. Those businesses, and now social media and internet has been around for 20 years. The people that are not on the web are dying a slow death. Yes. So in terms of, say, not just the finance world, but a finance company using an Instagram, <coughs> yep. how would you suggest that they do that? That's an excellent question. I, I, I love that question. Okay. So this is a really good question and it comes back to our tunnel of love, right? And everybody has this. <clears throat> is it you need to become trusted in your marketplace and so how do you do that? And so you don't do it by talking about you. So the last thing that Herdy would do is talk about his financial products to the marketplace, right? So part of your Q&A in finance land is to actually discover what are the questions what are the issues that are related to my business? So part of it is lifestyle. Do I have enough money to retire? Do I have enough money for a house? The lifestyle questions come out. And then your Instagram content is driven by that situation. So you might go and look at a house, which might be a beautiful ocean front for sale, and get a photo of that on Instagram saying, get your financial dream sorted out now so you can own this one day. Okay? So that's the type of conversation. And it all comes out of that Q&A you guys do at the start, which is really important to, bring, to flush out those questions. The other thing I find with Instagram is that, um, so before everyone got here today, we took a photo of the three of us in front of our pool. So that's just a way of, we'll Instagram that, show people that this is us, we're having a bit of fun behind the scenes. Yes, it's kind of about us, but it's about us putting on a seminar for our clients. Mm -hmm. So from a finance perspective, um, Nick might go to a private a luncheon, take a photo of a guest speaker, here learning today about da -da 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 -da, Interest rates, the yeah. RBA, and, so it's, it's but about thinking a little bit outside the stream. And also, let's remember they're all people first, right? So, do you want to do business with boring Herdy or fun Herdy? Okay. Do you want to get on board the Herdy Gertie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the ordinary. Or do you want to just kick back and say, "Oh, I, I can't wait to go to my finance planner. He's so boring. It's unbelievable." Okay. I sit there and he craps on about all this finance stuff. It's just ripper. Of course not. Okay. At the end of the day, and Herdy's my finance guy, so we'll sit down and have a chat for an hour, and we'll do ten minutes of work. Perfect. So what better way to show that personality off than showing her at the footy with his kids or down at the bay having a beer or an ice cream? Okay, these are the sort of things. Have fun with yourself because ultimately remember what you're trying to do. You're trying to engage trust with the consumers. And so part of content marketing is blowing open the doors and stuff that's hidden behind because they're too scared to tell, for example, the price. So why are customers, why, why are businesses scared to tell the price? Might turn business away. Is that because you're too expensive? Not really. Perception. So, what's the number one thing consumers want to find out about online? The price. 
Isn't it frustrating? I'm about to say. The real estate industry. Right? The real estate you knew I was about to say it. Didn't you? The real estate industry. I want to know how much this freaking house costs. Right? Oh my god. And then you call them up and they won't tell you. It's like you guys are supposed to know the price. You're trying to sell this product. Would you please give me the price? Now, tip number 27. <laughs> go, go ahead and tell your customers in your content what the price is and tell them how you arrive at that price and tell them why there are challenges. You've got a challenge with Australian wages. Tell that story. Okay? Crayfish is expensive. So tell the story as to why it's expensive. Educate them as to why this stuff costs money. Educate them as to what the quality of the story is all about. Educate them as to why your products are superior. On our website, only just recently I did this, I went and rated the six other advertising agencies in Adelaide we'd like to compete against. We didn't include ourselves. And we provided the, the review on the other players. Now, of course, when I did that, I picked the best six. So I naturally included the kingdom by default up against KWP, Jam, etc. Now, whether we are as good as those companies is kind of irrelevant, but, I sh but the sheer fact that I was comparing myself to them implies that we are. But it also allows me, to, and I told nice things about those guys, I borrowed content straight off their front page of the website and stuck it on ours, saying this is what they say and this is what I say. I get more search because of that. So when people, Because you know how much time it would take somebody to find out about your competitor on the internet? How long? Seconds. Seconds. If they're legitimate competitors and got their content marketing sorted out, seconds is the answer. So why are we hiding behind this? Let's blow this wide open and start telling people the price because what's going to happen when you start telling customers the truth about your price? What are they going to start doing? Trust. trust. The trust is gained. And also, when they get to this point in time here, number 70, they are better prepared to have the sales conversation with you because you've actually educated them on the things to look for, particularly if you guys have got quality products because you can talk about the quality issue. Price is a poor salesperson's only tool. How much you got? You go down to one of the fantastic experiences you have with the electrical salespeople in Meyer, David Jones, etc. And I used to be one of those people. I'd like to buy a big screen TV. How much you got? Well, mate, I've none yet. I'm not talking money yet. Okay. What ends up happening is price becomes the only thing a consumer has to rate a product in the absence of all other information. Yet we buy as consumers on value for money. Value for money. We don't buy on price. We buy on value for money. Price only becomes relevant when nobody else gives us reasons to buy on value for money. So yes, and we used to train this all the time at Next Buy and the Computer Guys. Yes, my computer's $2,500, but I give you free training. I give you insulation. I give you this, 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 and this. And yes, you can buy the other one at $2,000. But we represent far better value for money. But we are more expensive, yes. But we are better value for money for you. And my skilled sales team were able to deliver that message because we train them every single day to do that. So in the absence of, of any other thing to buy, price wins. Now, if you are providing information that is giving your customer trust and you are providing information that allows them to make an educated decision, price becomes less relevant. And what happens when they go to the competitor who won't tell them the price? They don't trust them. What are these guys hiding? Why aren't they telling you the price? Christian Inc. told me the price. Why aren't you guys? And you call them on the phone and say, how much does it cost? So I may have to speak to a salesperson first. Why don't I want him? I want to speak to, I want to find out how much it costs. Why won't you tell me? I'm suspicious now. What's your problem? And you bounce out. You go back to Christian Inc. and buy from them because they told you everything about the price. Because people are going to the internet to become educated about what they want to know to make their, their educated decision. How many times did you see the price discussed in your wedding hunt? Not enough. And how much did that frustrate you? And how often did you bounce out and say, well, I've got shitloads of other places to choose from here, so if you're not going to bother telling me the price, I don't care about your drinks menu. I don't care about your food menu because I know I can talk about that later once I've chosen you. So don't give me the stuff I don't need. Give me the stuff I do need. So content marketing, give them the stuff they need. Very important. Ding. Caught you by surprise. Six reasons love Pinterest. Eight reasons love Pinterest. We'll do that whole new Pinterest session another day because I don't want to waste all your day, you guys. Let's just check out check this here, Kristen. How are we rolling? <coughs> Why well, you need social media? Done that one. Social media platforms ignite your content. So the social media platforms are there for you to make sure that when you write your blog post, you can tweet it out. 
you can send it out via Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. So the social media channels are there to promote what you guys write. So when we send out our stuff, when we write a blog post, we then send out four to five tweets spaced out over a period of a week. We then repurpose that four to, for three to four posts on Facebook, two to three posts on LinkedIn, three to four posts on Google, a Pinterest, a Pinterest, uh, oh cool, Jim slide, a Pinterest, a Pinterest picture, an Instagram picture with hashtags, and out it goes. Okay, we then use this information, and this is the repurposing bit. These exact slides are taken from the headline of our blog, from the headline of our EDM, which also went out to the various different social media channels. So this is the eighth time we've used these graphics. Eight times. Word swag on the iPhone, greatest program ever. Tip number 422. Okay, get word swag on your phone, make life easy for you, put our creators out of a job. Word swag, unreal. Okay, so this is all word swag stuff, takes us three minutes to make these graphics. Interesting graphics. Putting text over pictures has a 60% greater impact than no text over pictures. So get text over your pictures and what you're doing. So in this situation here, we've got repurposing occurring. All the different bits and pieces are going out in multiple different formats, same content. So getting back to the point about putting that audio dialogue into, or getting that audio dialogue from your question sessions. So that audio dialogue, when it comes back from the transcriber, becomes the basis for your blogs, becomes the basis for your web pages, becomes chopped up into what must be 2,000 tweets, becomes cut up into what must be many, many Instagram posts, becomes cut up into Facebook posts, LinkedIn posts, Google Plus posts. It allows you to create your entire content marketing message. And that's one set of Q&A. Okay. Grammarly, another great plugin. Get that one. So Grammarly checks your grammar on the fly. Grammarly. Grammarly. Grammarly? Can't spell it. <coughs> Grammarly. How do you spell it? Yes, it's got Yeah. I know it's across the web, it's a Chrome plugin, but it's also an app you can buy. So you write in Grammarly, check all your stuff. Better still, Voice Notes is another great iPhone, iOS app, which I use. Voice Notes, 90% better clarity of dictation compared to the dictation module in the iPhone. So what you do is you're driving home and you think of a story and you dictate it into Voice Notes, yeah? Not at all. You and I, babe. We're up to about 10 o'clock here. This is going well. <laughs> yeah. So, so voice notes, record it, send it to yourself, stick it in Grammarly, click all the green tags saying, yeah, fix that, fix that. And within minutes, you've got a story. And you repurpose that, edit it, bang, out it goes. Twitter, blog, web page, whatever the method. Now, don't be ashamed of the fact you've only got one Twitter follower because everyone had one once. Okay? Everyone had one once. Don't be ashamed of the fact you've got low numbers because it just takes time and work. But work on it because when you do have something good to say, for example, with Twitter, Twitter's the only real-time thing we have. Okay, Every other thing has got delays built into it. Twitter's the only real-time thing. Real-time. Something happens, bang, out it goes. Are we tweeting still like crazy? Yeah. So out it goes. When you do have something to say that's relevant, Twitter's there for you. So as a rule, look at a 10-1-1 rule when you're doing Twitter. Ten tweets of somebody else's cool stuff that you like in your market segment. Be generous. 10 tweets of their stuff. One tweet of your stuff that's promotional and one tweet of yours that's content contributing. So we're talking about 12 tweets, but only one is talking about how good am I, okay? Put me out, I'm on fire once out of the 12 times. Now some ratio, some people talk 411, 516, you know, you've got to find the correct ratio for you. How do you know this? What software tool would you use to find this out? HubSpot, exactly right. So HubSpot, through its analytics, allowed us to work out what was the correct level of tweeting. And we found out that if we pushed it too hard, it dropped off. The social media interaction engagement with our site dropped off. If we did too little, it dropped off. So we found the sweet spot. Now everyone's gonna have a different sweet spot depending on their content mix, but it takes, it's a science. So now we are driving a lot of likes because we found our sweet spot. And the minute I push it again and, drive, and put too much in there, it drops off again, disaster, okay? So t make sure you're building that list because you never know when you can win that award. You never know when you guys float on the stock exchange, you gotta tell someone. You never know when it's gonna take off, okay? You gotta start one to get to 10 to 100 and it takes a lot of work. Tip number 46, how do we actually start building that Twitter list? We'll start following people, okay? The Twitter etiquette suggests that you actually follow back. 
unless you're a celeb, of course. So in the case of Twitter, sit there, put Housewives of Melbourne on TV. <sighs> Why? Like, it's a stupid yeah. comment. It's a terrible show. Put it on there, but it's, it's slightly amusing, and sit there and just follow people. Follow people in your town, follow people in your state, follow people in your industry. And you'll hit your 2,000 limit, and then you've got to wait for them to catch up. But at least you get 2,000, and you can start talking to those people. And they'll follow you back, and before you know it, your list will start growing. Okay? Does that take time? Absolutely. But, Bacara, there she's on the wall. Went to the Olympic Games in London. She's over here on the stairs. We've got two of you. How many hours did you practice to go to the Olympic Games in London? 2003. 2003. So, nine years later, she rocks up to the Olympic Games and she's wearing two pieces of clothing. <laughs> She makes the Olympic Games, and that's 30 to 40 hours every single week. Now, success, first of all, has to be defined. So when we talk about a systemized way to get marketing working for you, we have a seven-stage plan. It's called the Grow Sales Fast Process. The logo's on the thing over here. It's a systemized way. It's 165 steps to get your marketing correct, and you guys have heard probably 80 of them today at some point. But importantly, do you have a systemized way to get success? The AIS and the athletes of the world are training like crazy to a regimented process. Are you investing time in marketing? Do you really want to grow your business? Are you determined to be successful? And have a good hard look at yourself because if you answer yes, I'm determined to be successful, and if you answer yes, I want to grow my business, then you've got to answer well, how many legitimate hours am I putting every single week into my shopping center to actually grow my business? And the answer is, from what we see anecdotally, studies show that 95% of the people we speak to are doing virtually no marketing at all, no effort at all to grow their own business. And they want to grow businesses, but you've actually got to work hard. So you've got to actually work hard and put some time in. So if that means you have to suffocate yourself by watching Housewives of Melbourne following tweets, following Twitter people, by all means do that. But if you want success in a global business, do some work. And a systemized approach is important. And you only have to go and ask the cab drivers how valuable their taxi plate is right now to be reminded about the power of the internet and the global economy. Their taxi plates would not be worth 10 bucks right now simply because of what Uber's doing. UberX will come and that'll be the end of that industry. So how close are you to being wiped out? How hard are you working to stop that is a big question. And in our observations that people aren't working hard enough in a systemized way to get marketing working for you. So Twitter is a way of doing that. Ding. Repurpose your old content into new diamonds, okay? Just real quick, I talked about the idea of getting the information <clears throat> recorded and repurposing. Don't be scared to pull your old stuff, though. So we're going back through all our old tenders and putting them into our websites now. So all the cool stuff we said has a shelf life that is quite long. And so that's going back into the different websites we can think of. So go and grab your old tenders. Grab your old, old profile documents. Grab the stuff you've written before and get it into your website. There's plenty of content lying around your organization which has not been used for, for a long time, which is valuable. So repurpose the old stuff. Dig out. For example, we've got the Gruen Transfer ad from three or four years ago. That will get some love if we put that on our website. So let's get it out there. Okay. So repurpose, reuse. Get stuff in there. It can be diamonds. You don't know what's going to fly necessarily. Playgrounds at HubSpot are amazing because they tell you what you're actually doing well and it gives you a chance to discover what's good stuff for you. So use that. That's good. Next one. We're nearly at the end. So the HubSpot stuff, in closing, yesterday we did 225 hits in one day, target crushing greatness. Now, we don't have a lot of people coming. Remember, it was 400 a month only three months ago. 400 hits a month, and yesterday we did 225 in one day. One day. Is that working for us? Absolutely. Is it time to invest in some marketing software? Absolutely. 